Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's Women's Live Colour Advice Session. Apologies, we are um, running behind schedule. We've had difficulties getting on this evening, so te te uh, technical difficulties I should say. So it can be a little bit of an issue at times. It certainly has proven to be an issue tonight, but that's okay. We're here, we're on. So my name is Fiona, I'm the Torben's Colour Specialist. I'm here this evening to talk all things colour. Um, also, if you're embarking on a project and you'd like some information about our wonderful portfolio of products that we have designed to protect and beautify your space, you've certainly come to the right place. So, um, as I said, I'm here to talk um, all things projects, colour, and um, certainly our wonderful products. So, it's an opportunity for um, you all at home or everybody that, that is um, watching to pop any questions that you do have into the feed and I can certainly answer them for you because that's what these sessions are all about. So they are designed to um, assist you. So um, each and every Thursday night, we, um, I, I think I'm a little bit nervous, I think because I'm running so far behind because I've had technical difficulties, it's thrown me off track. So um, we are here to answer your questions. So for, I'm gonna tell you how the session runs. So for, the first half an hour, I am in front of the camera streaming live and um, it's an opportunity for you to pop any questions that you do have into the feed and I will do my very best to answer them for you. And then if um, you're wanting to share some images, etc. with me, some photos of you know, a particular room that you'd like some help with colour, etc. Once we finish streaming live, um, I usually sit back behind the scenes for a further half an hour or so and that is then a fantastic time for you to pop the images into the feed um, and then I can have a look at them for you and certainly offer some suggestions. So I'm going to kick off tonight, like look, tonight's all about, most of our sessions are about frequently asked questions. So what we do is we like to keep it real. So we look at, um, you know, the frequently asked questions, the commonalities that are happening across all of our social media channels and we collate them and then we bring them to life um, on a Thursday night. So as I said, it's a really good opportunity to talk all things colour, um, projects, products. So I'm going to start. So the first question that I have been asked this evening is what is the colour in our post? So our advertising post on Facebook, um, the wonderful green is, I believe, I'm just going to get it up here for you. Let's hope I can find it now is a wonderful colour called um, Boston Ivy. So that is the fantastic colour that appears on our um, post for this week. And another question that I do have here is from um, Scally. So thank you, Scally, for the question that you popped into our, um, our ad that was um, sponsored post, I should say, that was going around social media. So your question is, would you recommend painting the skirting boards of the feature wall in a bedroom, etc., the same colour as the feature wall, or leave it white like the rest of the bedroom, thanks, or the rest of the room, thanks. That's a really good question. So there's two ways to look at it. So painting your skirting boards, um, say for example, the beautiful colour, the green that I just had up on screen, Boston Ivy, a gorgeous green. If you're wanting to really make that green pop and sort of frame it up and highlight it, then you could um, paint your trims the same colour as um, the rest of your walls or using a white trim. Let's just say you've got crisp white, you've got that beautiful green Boston Ivy, um, the rest of your trims are crisp white and you're wondering what am I going to paint against that beautiful green, you could paint the crisp white which will really frame the green up and allow it to pop. Now if it's a smaller room, um, the other way you go about it is to paint the, um, because you've got that beautiful green wall, paint the trims the same colour as the wall and what that does is it doesn't it doesn't define that green per se so what it stops doing is it stops that framing up which allows you to see how large that wall is if the trims are the same colour that wall seems to be elongated a little bit more so you can trick you can play trickery with colour if you like you can make rooms look a particular way um, you, can, you know you can make spaces look larger um, you can close areas in by the colours that you use, like having the walls, you know, advancing towards you, um, or you can have them receding, so making them look bigger. So a couple of suggestions there. It all depends on how you're wanting your space to look. For me, 
Um, I really love the idea of having a feature wall and then, you know, defining it or framing it up with um, a different colour trim. I think it looks fantastic. I did use a beautiful deep colour, um, which is called Trendy, which is one of our blacks as a feature wall. And then, as I mentioned before, crisp white had the crisp white on trims. It looked spot on. So, yeah, there's a couple of suggestions there. I hope that helps. Um, certainly, Scully, if you're wanting to know anything further, pop something else into the feed. Be very happy to um, answer or offer some more suggestions. Thank you. Okay, so hi, Alicia. Thank you very much for your question. You're saying, hi, I would love some options for our whole house um, to be painted in a nice, fresh, crisp white. So you've got kitchen, bathroom, etc. of brown, blacks and neutrals. Um, there are way too many whites helped. Okay, so you've got kitchen and bathroom, kitchen and bathrooms, which are brown, black and neutral. There are way too many whites. Okay, so, and you're wanting a whole house to take through a really fresh crisp white. You could use crisp white. Crisp white is our number one white. I'm in love with the color. It's a beautiful color. What makes it so fantastic is when you look at what goes into creating the color per se. So it starts off, I'll, I'll talk about crisp white. So it starts off as a brilliant white base. So a really fantastic, lovely, fresh white. And then we put um, tints into that white to create different hues. So with crisp white, it contains um, one of our tints, which is called um, raw umber. Sorry, I had to think for a moment. When you look at that color in its entirety, it's, it's a murky sort of, uh, it's a murky sort of uh, brownie tone. It's, it's not a color that you'd want to paint on your walls. However, as a tint and then put into the white, it looks fabulous. And it creates a white that is, um, the way I would describe crisp white is it has a very soft glow. So it's not cold. Um, it's got that slight warmth to it without it being too warm. And it just sits beautifully in area in any area because a lot of areas so you can look at whites and you can start to work out um well there's a you know a lot of people say well you know the, the things that surround whites when you look into what whites would suit an area um best you know rooms that are saturated with a lot of natural light a cooler white works really really well and then for areas where you lack light um, a warmer white works extremely well and the reason you would use um, a warmer white in those sort of areas is it creates warmth. If you were using a cooler colour or, or a cooler white in areas that lack light, it dulls the room and it tends to make the room look, it, I'm going to use the word sort of gloomy. So, but crisp white, because of it, the raw umber tint that it contains, it's um, so adaptable and you can use it throughout any space. And I have, I, we love to renovate. I've used it in lots of homes. Um, I'm always recommending crisp white and I think it's always a really good starting point if you're going on a journey and you're looking at whites because you can stand at a color wall and you can stand there deliberating over oh, which white should I use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it, it can become quite overwhelming. So default, have a look at crisp white. It's fantastic. I would recommend, Alicia, that you start with that. Um, another way you could go as well is like you can define whites as being um, cool, warm and neutral. So I've just touched on crisp white. The other, um, going into a neutral sort of space, so your cooler whites have more of a blue undertone, your warmer whites I'm going to use have more of a, dare I say, sort of a creamier undertone and then your neutral whites tend to have um, more of a slightly green undertone. So sort of that greeny grey, a green grey beige is probably the best way to describe a neutral style of white. So you could um, look at something being neutral, taking into consideration that you've got browns and blacks and other neutrals. And the other colour that I would recommend you have a look at is a colour called Alpine Snow. Now I'm going to hold it up here on the screen. It is the third colour down my screen because I'm actually on my phone because... Um, we couldn't get onto um, the computer system tonight for some reason. Um, you're not going to be seeing a really good indication of the colour. So what I would recommend is that you have a look. If you hop onto www.torgmans.com.au and when you go onto our website, it's fantastic. It's very easy to navigate around. So it has, um, it's got colours, it's got products. So if you hover over colours, the drop down menu and then click on colours, and you can go in there and using the search function, putting in the color names and then it'll bring the color up and you can start to have a really good look. So have a look at Alpine Snow, have a look at Chris White. 
Then what I also recommend is when you're looking at colours, because a colour sitting in my home is going to look different to a colour sitting in your home. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make. They'll go to their friend's house and they'll say, oh, you know, my friend, I've, I have talked about this so many times at a colour wall. So it's, um, you know, somebody's gone down to Jane's house, their friend, and Jane has, let's just say, um, she's picked a beautiful white, it's in her space. I'm just looking at here. So she's used Miss Universe in a home, it looks fantastic. And then you go, I'm gonna put that in my space. And you bring it to your home, you pop it on the walls and you go, it looks nothing like how it looks in Jane's. Reason being is there's so many things that will influence the color in your space. So really important to understand your lighting levels, whether you've got you know warm or cool lights. Um, also your flooring. So for example, if you've got timber flooring that has a lot of warmth and you're getting a lot of sun, um, throughout certain times of day on that flooring, it's going to reflect onto the walls and all of a sudden your colour is going to look different. It's going to look warmer. Um, if you've got, and I use this analogy all the time, say you've got a red leather lounge, certain times of day that colour is going to look pink. Um, so it's really important to test the colour in your home. So the best thing that I would recommend is to, you're hopping into Bunnings, um, all of our paint comes on large palettes and in between each um, layer of paint are what are called palette liners. So they're large, big pieces of cardboard. So if you grab, you know, go and talk to one of the friendly paint team members, ask them for a large piece of cardboard and then you're going to want to cut a sample size. So you want to have a piece of cardboard that's a metre by a metre square. Then what I would recommend you do is you get your sample pot, you're putting three coats um, of paint so, you know, in allowing drying time in between each coat, but in total you want three um, coats of paint. The first, I know if I'm talking something like Endure, um, it's a two coat system, <clears throat> excuse me, but because we're painting on cardboard, we're going to want to pretend that we're undercoating. So that third coat in this instance is going to aid in it as an undercoat. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you use three coats of paint on bare gyp rock. You're going to want to use a, um, a primer sealer undercoat as your first coat because gyp rock, for example, has lots of tiny little pinholes and something like three in one is going to fill those pinholes and give you a great foundation to then put your two coats of top coat on. So it's really important. So in this, in this instance, three coats of um, your sample pot then when your piece of cardboard is dry test it in two areas so you're going to want to here's your wall here's your floor put in your um, sample here so that's sitting against the floor but up against the wall and that way it will enable you to see how the color looks at different times of day and um, taking into consideration or pay particular attention um, you know throughout the day but then also of an evening when you have that artificial lighting on and you know, don't be afraid to test it in other areas, um, other rooms as well, just to see how it's going to work for you in your space. Now, the other um, place to test it as well is, so here's your wall, here's your ceiling. So this time you're putting your sample on the wall, but up against the ceiling. So what that's going to do is, it is going to allow you to see how that color is going to work, say for example, of an evening when you've got your artificial lighting on or your lights on, and you'll get to see how that color works within your environment. So I can't stress enough how um, important testing colors are, especially whites, because whites can really play within your space. And I've had lots of conversations with many people about their whites um, and you know how they can feel a bit disappointed because it's not what they had imagined it would look like. So it's really good just to sample it, you know, for the cost of, I don't know, let's just say um, about $10 and throwing it out there for a sample pot, it is money well spent. So that's for everybody that's watching, thoroughly recommend that. I hope that helps. Okay, if there's, oh, thanks. You're welcome, um, Alicia. If there's anything else that I can help you with, pop something else into the feed. Very happy to answer some further questions. Thanks. Okay. Hi Fiona, thank you very much for joining us this evening. So your question is, what is a good deep green colour for a front door please? Have native plants and timber panelling facade, thanks. Okay, so a good deep green colour for a front door. Question is, um, what other colours are 
on the exterior facade. So what colour is your... Okay, so you've got timber panelling on the facade. Is it painted? Is it just natural timber? Is it stained a particular colour? And is there anything else that I should be taking into consideration? So um, let's just say as well the colour of your windows or your roof, etc. I just like to take everything into consideration so that I can ensure that I'm going to give you that right toned green that's going to work with all of the other elements. So let me know a little bit more and I'll be very happy to offer some suggestions. Thank you. Oh, hi Alicia. So you'd also love a neutral colour to go with whites and blacks. Okay, how deep are we wanting the colour to be? So, and are you talking about a colour that's going to be, excuse me, for, for something like a feature wall? So are we talking when we go neutral? Because believe it or not, the new neutrals nowadays, excuse me, are green is being defined as a new neutral. Um, you've got your caramel tones that are being defined as the new neutral and also sort of those dusty um, sort of beigey pink tones as well. So they're the new neutrals. So if you let me know a little bit more information, I'll be very happy to um, give you some colour suggestions. Thank you. Hi, David. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. So you're saying, hi, Fiona. I've spray painted my lounge room ceiling yesterday with three in one. Awesome. Um, but now having trouble deciding on colour. The room is a large room that doesn't get much natural light. Can be warm or cool lighting, not daylight. Three metre high ceiling, old Victorian Federation home, lots of mahogany and rosewood furniture trim and ceiling fan. I am limited to the white range. Um, colour for ceilings and walls. So, okay, David, are you wanting to, I'm just trying to picture your home here. So you've got three metre high ceilings. Do you have any... Um, let me guess. Oh, sorry, let me, I'm just trying to articulate <laughs> what I'm thinking here. Do you have anything like picture rails or anything like that? So, you know, I'm thinking the ceiling comes down to the picture rail, you know, where we could um, use one particular white and then for the walls, etc. we could look at just slightly changing the white. I'm just thinking here. If, let me know a little bit more information. Very happy to offer you some suggestions. Thank you. Hi Adrian, thank you very much for joining us this evening. So your question is, my son's room has polished black butt wooden floors with exposed wooden rafters on the ceiling with vivid white between rafters. The walls are a light pale highland grey. He would like a green feature wall. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want the room, sorry, I don't want the room to feel too dark. Any recommendations that could work for this scenario? Thank you. Okay, so... We've got black butt, we've got white, and then we've got a light pale, pale highland grey. Let me just think about that one for a moment. Um, try and see whether I have highland grey in here. Okay, so you would like a green feature wall. So perhaps something I'm wondering whether you went down the track of more of a, because you're not wanting anything that's too dark, something that I'm taking into consideration, white timber, um, sort of a gray. There is a beautiful colour here called Highland Meadow, which is going to give you that green, but it's not going to be too dark, so your room won't feel too dark. Or if you're wanting to lighten it up a little bit, you could also look at a colour we have here, which is called White Clover. Something like that could be a really good starting point. Um, let me just look as well. Or oh, there's also, maybe that's getting a little bit too... The other option is another colour here, which is called, it's the second one here, which is called um, Sussex. So have a look at that. That is um, also quite a stunning striking green without being too dark. So that 
and also your Highland Meadow. I'll just pop them up alongside each other. So you can see um, the colours all together. So here we go here, having a look at these, sorry, these two, I'm back, I'm back to front here on this camera. Those two there along with this one here. Have a look at those. Um, let me know whether that's um, something that you had imagined. And um, if not, pop something else into the feed. I will be very happy to offer some further suggestions. So you've got Sussex and um, Highland Meadow and then also White Clover if you're just wanting to dial that colour down a little bit. Okay, thanks. Okay, Fiona, thank you very much. Okay, so you've got Monument, um, Timber is Natural, Plants are Green, Lime and Yellow. Righty oh so, and you're after? Let me just revisit that. A deep green colour for a front door. Ooh, so you could go... Tenora Green is a beautiful green. So that there is a stunning colour. Now the secret when you are colouring up a front door, and I'm going to see whether I've got the chip here, and I should do, is to gloss the colour up. Now what happens when you gloss a colour up, it um, intensifies. So if you can see here, this is a really good trick. So this is a colour chip off the wall, as you can see. Um, here, so pretty much a low sheen sort of finish. And then because here emulates what it looks like in a gloss finish. So you can see the difference, like it's quite um, glossed up and it's intensified a little bit more. So what you can do is if you can get, get yourself a colour chip um, and then put a little bit of clear sticky tape over the side and it's going to emulate or it's going to show you what the colour is going to look when it's glossed up. It's a really good trick and it certainly helps because as I said, glossing up a colour tends to intensify it and that's just way to, the, that is because of the way the light then um, changes and reflects etc. So Tenora Green's a beautiful green and then the other one and look no I think Tenora Green would probably be the best it's going to sit really well with monument it's going to work with your natural timber and given that you've got greens um, green plants and lime green sort of lime and yellow as well it's going the undertone of this will sit perfectly i hope that helps um the only thing is to consider sometimes like when you're painting a front door so <clears throat> excuse me i need some water excuse me one moment sorry when you're painting a front door and if you're painting a new front door um sometimes there are stipulations against um the depth of color that can be used on your front door so for example, every colour that we have has what is called an LRV, which is a light reflectance value. And so some uh, front door companies like to see a colour that sits at around about 50 or greater. So if you think of a scale, zero being black, 100 being white, and 50 is that mid-tone. So 50 or greater starts at that mid-tone going up to white. 50 or lower, so that's that mid-tone going down to black. If the colour's too deep on a new front door, um, it can sometimes, uh, you know, the colour will draw heat if you like, and sometimes the front door, the timber, can then twist and warp. So that's really important to understand how that um, can play out if it's a new front door. So always, new front doors, check any guarantees and stipulations that they have around colour. And if you're wanting to know the LRV of a colour, as I was talking about before, going to Torbman's, um, www.torbman's.com.au, and then you can click on the, um, going to the colour menu, click on colours, and then once you, you can scroll right down and it'll say um, colour swatch shop. So if you click on that, that then takes you to our swatch shop where every colour that we have is pretty well available on there and every colour you can use the search function, type the colour in and then you can click on the colour and all of the colour data, all the colour information and things as we're talking about tonight being LRV will be available there. So really easy place to find it. 
um, I can pop something into the feed at the end of this just to show you all where you can locate that. But it's, it's a great place to, one, start and, um, you know, explore the world of colour. But also, too, if you're wanting to know some more technical stuff around your colour, you can find that on there as well. But also, too, everything about our products is on there. And as I mentioned earlier tonight, fantastic portfolio of products um, designed to not only protect and beautify your space, but they're going to bring the projects that we're talking about this evening to life. And everything on the um, drop down menu when it comes to um, products. So you can hover over the menu, it'll drop down, and you can see, for example, um, doors and trims. So it'll bring up products that are applicable if you're painting your door, etc. So it's been made um, to navigate extremely easy. So I can pop a link to that in there as well once I stop streaming. Okay. Okay, Sabrina, thank you for joining us. How many colours in a room is too many? Well, that's a really good question. So when you are designing your space or um, colouring up your space in this instance, it's really important to understand, um, I guess, how colour's going to work. And so there is an old design principle, which is called 60, 30, 10. So it's the, you know, if you've ever walked into a room and you kind of feel at ease and everything feels well balanced, they've probably used that 60, 30, 10 principle, if you like. And so what it is, is it's using primarily three colors. So 60% is the main color, 30% is that secondary color, and then 10% is your accent color. Sometimes that 10% can be split into five and five, so you've got two accent colors if you like. It can work really, really well. Now the other secret to designing or creating your perfect space is to, um, repetition is really important. So it's not only, so for example, you've painted your ceilings in crisp white, you've got your walls in a beautiful, let's just say, what can I just think of here? You've got your walls in Ari Ivory, which is a lovely, beautiful, um, soft, warm sort of tone, which is um, fantastic if you're creating that modern Mediterranean aesthetic. I'm just going to see if I can find it. I can find it any other time, but just because I'm live. So you've got this. So your ceiling and your trims, let's just say, could be your... 30%, your 60% could be your wall colour, which is your Ari Ivory. So we've got crisp white, Ari Ivory, and then your 10% um, could be a fantastic accent colour. And you might choose to either paint one wall as a feature wall or create a hero in a space. Um, and you can do that by way of perhaps painting um, a door, a feature door in a colour. That, that draws the eye. So generally where you put an accent of colour tends to make the eye gravitate towards that. So that's what we call about creating a hero in a room, if you like, or in your space. So it's somewhere where you want the eye to be drawn to. So that's your 60, 30, 10. 60, 35 and 5. So you'd use your crisp white on your ceiling, for example, Aria Ivory on your walls, and then you might choose to do a painted door in one colour. And then you might choose to, perhaps um, you're upcycling some furniture, you might have a chest of drawers and you might choose to paint that in another colour. So that sort of shows you how you can use colour within your space. Then that repetition would come by way of your cushions, your throw rugs, um, perhaps a, a doona cover um, that replicates um, the colour that you're using in your space. And that creates that beautiful cohesion. So that's one way of ensuring that when you're designing your space and you're using colour, um, you're creating a very aesthetically pleasing, cohesive space. I hope that helps. Um, Sabrina, if you've got any further questions, pop it into the feed, very happy to help. Um, Alicia, thank you, yes. So if you do the walls crisp white, are the trims the same? I would do the trims the same. I think it looks fantastic. Um, so if you do your walls, for example, in, let's just say, endure, and using a low sheen, if you're going to do your um, trims, I would recommend using water-based enamel and perhaps either doing it in a gloss or a semi-gloss. It depends on what you prefer. The reason I'm saying to use a water-based uh, water enamel, sorry, not a water-based trim, 
a water-based enamel is because um, Tobin's water-based enamel is designed to be non-yellowing. So if you're cre creating that beautiful white on white aesthetic, if you like, you want your walls and your trims to be the same colour. You want your trims to stay, to stay nice and white. So um, traditional oil-based enamels have always been known to um, golden up or yellow, but water-based enamel won't do that. The beauty also of a water-based enamel is quicker drying time, very low VOCs, which are the volatile organic compounds that are admitted into the air as paint dries. So we're talking about minimal smell. You know, I remember my grandfather used to paint and I remember going into his house and for months afterwards, you know, like three months or so, you could still smell that old um, oil-based smell. So yeah, we don't want that. So yeah, have a look at water-based enamel, it's fantastic. Oh, okay, sorry if you only missed your the colour that I talked about. The green that I mentioned, I'll just hold it up again, is, um, so your phone glitched away, everything tonight's glitched for me, so it's all good, is um, a colour called Tenora Green, which is this beautiful green here. So have a look at that. Um, you can find that in our um, on our website, and you can certainly grab yourself a sample pot of that. And also, just to let you know, this, um, stays on our Facebook channel so you can always re-watch it and then see what we talked about um, in relation to your door and LRVs etc. Okay Laura thank you very much for joining us this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are building a home with a Hamptons facade and need to find the perfect colour white. For the cladding, we are after a greyish, so you want that grey beige, no worries. Almost white colour with no obvious yellow undertones. Any advice would be great. So the perfect white, okay, a grey beige, a greyish, which seems to be trending very much at the moment. Greyish is beautiful, so for anyone that is listening and wondering what it is, when you look at greys, you can define greys into four categories. You've got a grey that has a red purple undertone. You've got a grey that has a blue undertone, which is what everyone kind of traditionally refers to grey as being, or they know grey, you know, they talk about greys and that's what they default to. Um, you've got greys, which is um, a grey that has more of that brownie undertone. And then you've got um, a grey which has a green base which is defined as a neutral. So if anyone out there is beginning a journey with grey, not sure where to start, look at the greys that have that greeny sort of undertone, that neutral undertone, really easy start to, really easy place to start because a, um, excuse me, a grey that has that neutral undertone, the grey tends to sit really, really well with pretty much any other colour. There you go. Okay, so Laura, what um, colour bond colour are you using? That's something I should find out because that's going to help influence the white and the grey that we select. So what colour is your roof going to be? I'm just making sure I haven't missed that yet. What colour will your roof be, your garage door and your windows? And then I will come back to you with a perfect grey. Um, Okay, thanks David for coming back to us. Sorry it's taken me this, this long to um, come back to you. Okay, so um, yes, there is a picture out. Fantastic. I was thinking of painting the wall from the corners to the trim in one colour to elongate the wall and show off the ceiling height in a way. So hang on, let me get that. So the... Um, sorry. I've just had more um, questions pop up in the feed and the questions just jumped. So there is a picture out. I was thinking of painting the wall from the corners to the trim in one colour to elongate the wall and show off the ceiling white in a way. Okay, so just one colour. Yeah, fair call. Also the floor, uh, timber floor, similar to a golden maple colour. Okay, no worries. So you're just wanting a lovely, so let me just revisit the initial question. Um, which side of the cozy room is a lounge that doesn't get much natural light? It can be warm or cool lighting, not daylight. Um, old Victorian, lots of mahogany and rosewood furniture, trim and ceiling fan. I'm limited to the white range. You know what? And you've heard me talk about this tonight. Um, considering you don't have a lot of light, from what I'm understanding, is have a look at 
You could have a look at crisp white. Now you could use that for your ceilings and your walls. Obviously using the ceiling in a matte paint, uh, sorry, a flat. So ceilings are generally in a flat. Reason being is what it does is it stops um, glancing light and if there are any imperfections, it tends to help hide them. If you start to increase the sheen level, that's when imperfections, etc., can come to life, especially if you're going up to a gloss. So I would recommend um, crisp white would look fantastic all over as a place to start. The other way you could go, I'm just taking into consideration the tones of your, um, sorry my fan deck's having a meltdown here, the tones of your timber. You could also look at, so you could look at crisp white, you could look at cotton sheets, um, you could look at alpine snow, but as I mentioned earlier, I think it's really important um, to test the colours, especially in your environment, especially given that you've got the high ceilings and sort of the lack of light I'm, I'm imagining in some areas, but also to, you know, you've got a lot of darker furniture as well. So test the colours. I think that's really, really important. So yeah, cot, um, alpine snow, cotton sheets, crisp white. Now there is another colour that you could look at as well which is, it's slightly warmer, but it's still really light. Um, it's called Princess Bling. I would have a look at that as well. So there's four colours there. Um, you can find the colours on um, most colour walls. Have a look there to begin with. Um, even in our, here's a really good place as well. I'm just going through my drawers here. Our White's a Neutral Brochure. It has a world of whites in here and the way it works is just make sure I'm here you've generally got your cooler tones and you can follow the gradation bar so you've got more of your neutrals and then you've got um, warmer whites on that side grab one of these the colors are in here and this can be a really good starting point a really good reference and then sample pot large piece of cardboard testing etc in the areas that we've talked about tonight just to ensure that that color is going to work for you in your environment Okay, I don't even know how long I've been streaming. Isn't that terrible? I'm just talking away here. I think it might be time for me to go off camera and to, um, it probably was a while ago. I'll go off camera. I'm going to continue to answer questions um, from behind the scenes here. So don't go away. I've got um, a couple more. I will certainly come back to, um, I'll come back to you, Laura. Um, also, Sheila, I can see that there's, um, some questions in there so very happy to continue on so don't go away I'll answer further questions and if there are any further questions from everyone that I've already helped this evening pop something in and I can certainly refer to some further information for you so thank you very much everybody for joining us this evening I do apologize about our glitch um, to our um, time you know I wasn't on time due to technical difficulties uh, it happens. That's what happens when you go live sometimes and it certainly puts you off your game, but we got there in the end. Um, I appreciate you all um, joining us, hanging around and um, all of your questions this evening. So thank you very much. We will be back again next Thursday evening. So if you do, uh, once I finish this conclude tonight's session, if you do have any further questions, certainly come back and join us and I'll be very happy to help you then. But until then, everybody, stay safe. Have a fantastic week. And as I always say, happy painting. Thanks very much. Bye.